sehe, dass da auch was ist, oder? Good morning! <lacht> genau. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, here at our venue Frankfurter Hof and ladies and gentlemen out there online watching this event, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the network of great wine capitals to this opening ceremony of this year's annual conference here in the great wine capital of Germany in Mainz. Welcome again here at our venue Frankfurter Hof and of course to all of you watching this event online. I hope you can see me. <laughs> so, the motto of this year's annual conference is celebrating wine culture and I am sure that the city of Mainz but also the surrounding wine region of Rheinhessen will show you how to truly live up to that motto but what it already indicates is that wine is of course more than a beverage. Wine is always an integral part of the culture of a region and this is why in a region where wine is produced of course celebrating is not possible without wine. But in all wine-producing areas, like those surrounding the 11 great wine capitals, wine is, of course, also an important economic factor. And in most cases, in a lot of cases, this economy is boosted by historic, sometimes well-established family businesses, by family wineries. And this is why at this morning we would like to take the chance to have a closer look at how strong family businesses are shaping the wine industry, the wine culture, not only here in Rheinhessen, but also internationally. My name is Janina Huber. I'm working as a freelance presenter for wine events, and I used to be a German wine queen, and I'm very happy to guide you through this morning's event. But before we start talking to our guests, there are, of course, some persons who would like to say welcome to you. And first of all, as a representative of the federal state of Rheinland-Pfalz, I'm asking you to stand up already. Thank you so much. Yeah, as a representative of the federal state of Rheinland-Pfalz, I am now welcoming the head of department of the Ministry of Economic Affairs, of Transport, Agriculture and the most important, Viticulture to stage, Walter Reineck. Mayor Ebling. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here today in Mainz, the capital city of our state, Rheinland-Pfalz, for the opening of the annual meeting of the Bright Wine Capitals. And I uh, transmit the greetings of the Mrs. Daniela Schmidt, our Minister for Viniculture, She's the only minister of viniculture in Germany in all the 16 states. Rheinland-Pfalz is the only state which has this beautiful subject in its name. And this is no accident because Rheinland-Pfalz is the most important wine producer in Germany. Here about two-thirds of all German wines thrive along the River Rhine and its tributaries, and nine of ten bottles of wine consumed abroad come from our state. Thus it came as no surprise that viticulture and wine tourism are of great economic importance. Ladies and gentlemen, Mainz as the capital of Rheinhessen and Rheinhessen as Germany's largest wine-growing regions are worthy representatives in the international network of the great wine capitals. Indeed, all our wine-growing regions are particularly po popular tourist destinations in Rheinland-Pfalz, and they contribute greatly to our image. The combination of wine and tourism is a unique feature that sets tourism in Rheinland-Pfalz, Rheinland-Palatinate, apart from its competitors, There is no other state in Germany that vacationers associate so clearly with wine and wine culture as Rheinland-Pfalz. It is a culture of individual hospitality, a comparatively large proportion of foreign guests, 
an outstanding offer in wine culture and fine food, a rich density of cultural treasures, traditional, tangible regional character, and unique natural and cultural net landscapes. These qualities characterize wine tourism in Rheinland-Pfalz. Among these characteristics, strong family businesses play an outstanding role. Without family businesses, a functioning viniculture would be impossible. Whether as grape suppliers of viticulture cooperatives, as bulk wine producers supplying our Greek wineries, or as direct marketeers, by specialized shops or restaurants, family businesses are the defining element everywhere. The same is true for tourism. With its restaurants and catering businesses, hotels and service providers, also here, family businesses are the pillars. They all define the economic activity around wine tourism with individual offers and high-quality products in an almost incredible variety. To strengthen these effort, uh, efforts, Minister uh, of Viniculture Schmidt this year has offered a special honor in the framework of this year's Best Wine Tourism Awards in Mainz and Rheinhessen under the label of our new economic location brand, Rheinland-Pfalz Gold, that's Rheinland-Palatinate.gold. The winners in each characterized will receive 1,000 euros prize money and certificate. The award ceremony will take place this Thursday during the DWC Gala. With Rheinland-Pfalz.gold, we want to advertise even more strongly nationally and internationally for our business, tourism and wine location, Rheinland-Pfalz. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry for Economics and um, Economic Affairs and Viniculture offers good conditions for the development of wine tourism. For example, in Rheinland-Pfalz, we have been supporting the diversification of agricultural businesses for years. Let me just reference the keyword, vacation at the winery. Thanks to this enhancement of revenue, many wineries have created a new economic perspective for their businesses. In so doing, they are making an important contribution to the development of tourism in the rural areas of Rheinland-Pfalz, significantly enhancing their image as regions for tourism characterized by wine and culture. Our dedicated winemakers, men and women alike, know how good wine management works. They have opened many, more, many modern wine shops and inns, and not only locally at their own wineries. With the National Architect, uh, Architecture Prize Wine Architecture Award Wine, initiated by our ministry in cooperation with the Chamber of Architects, we want to support and honor these many activities around construction and modernization of wineries and wine tourism businesses. In larger cities as well, new locations and events conducive to convivial and stylish consumption of wine have sprung up. To cite just one example, let me mention the popular market breakfast that takes place every Saturday morning at the Mainz Cathedral Square, where wine friends of all generations meet. And I want to tell you, uh, let me assure you, if you don't arrive in time, you will have difficulties finding a place. With many new, modern and high-quality events and festivals, we reach not only wine consum consumers, but many vacationers and guests who have come to Rheinland-Pfalz for hiking and cycling and who become new wine customers. Often the guests stay connected to their vacation regions and their winemakers. They take their favorite wines home with them or have them delivered, sometimes for years or even decades. Along with the wine, our guests always take a little piece of the Pfalz region, the Mosel River, the Nile River, the Middle Rhine Valley, the River Ahr, or the Rhein-Hessen region home with them. And of course, the same is true for the guests in your regions, the regions that you have come to from to Mainz today. The positive effect and the enriching symbiosis of wine appreciation and tourism are the same everything, everywhere. They bring together wine-growing regions worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you an exciting and eventful weeks in, week in Mainz and Rhein-Hessen. 
manifold impressions and enjoyable encounters. And of course, all the best for you personally. I wish the annual meeting a good and smooth course. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Walter Reineck, as a representative of the federal state of Rheinland-Pfalz from the Ministry of Viticulture. It's great to have such a ministry here in our federal state. And to all participants here in our venue, you are now welcome to take off the translators again. Yeah. So this was the only speech that was translated from German to English, and I hope it was okay for you. The next person who wants to greet you today is... I would say, a man that many are jealous of. There are many mayors in Germany, of course, but there's only one mayor who's also ruling over a great wine capital. And now I would like to welcome to the stage the Lord Mayor of Mainz, Michael Ebling. <laughs> He's on his way. <laughs> Mr. Ebling. <laughs> Hello and good morning to you. Welcome to Mainz, dear President Florence, dear District Administrator Dorothea Schäfer, dear District Administrator Heiko Sippel, dear delegates from the Great Wine Capitals, some attending in person and others tuning in from all over the world of wine, dear guests. After the relaxed start to the 2021 annual conference yesterday evening, I'm delighted to officially launch our exciting week of activities with you today. On behalf of my colleagues Dorothea Schäfer from the district of Mainz-Bingen, my colleague Heiko Sippel from the district of Alzheimer-Worms, the head of economic affairs Manuela Matz, and the entire teams, I wish everyone a very warm welcome to the Great Wine Capital Mines in Rheinhessen. Finally, you might be thinking, because we would have loved to see you here last year. But the coronavirus pandemic prevented this from happening, and we've had, had to come up with new ideas for some of our activities. We are sadly unable to welcome representatives from all cities, personally in Mainz, Rheinhessen, some of you can only attend virtually. I would like to take this opportunity to give a very warm welcome to the Great Wine Capital delegates who are watching us on their computer screens. We are thinking of you, and it's nice that you can at least take part in our major events in this way. After all, there's a solution for almost everything, and certain concepts born out of the coronavirus pandemic have proven their worth in recent months. A lot has happened since we became the only German member of the Great Wine Capitals in 2008. Our membership in the global network has sparked the ambition of countless very good winemakers in Mainz and Rheinhessen, who are now not only focusing on producing high-quality wines, but also on marketing their wine tourism. An increasing number of growers have opened their doors to the public, and wine sellers have emerged with a mixture of traditional materials and modern features. In many places, lone warriors have joined forces to create interest groups and initiatives, including young winemakers from a town who jointly promote mines, Rheinhessen, and the local wine. Meanwhile, other winemakers have opened restaurants on their estate and set up rooms, apartments, and mobile home parking spaces for their guests who can enjoy unique tours of the local area on vintage buses or SUVs. Several hotels have incorporated wine in their room designs and spa packages, and we've even got an escape room in a wine cellar. This has been a great benefit for everyone, for the city, the region, and tourism. I can't overstate how important the Great Wine Capital has been as a connecting link in all our activities. 
we are now creating stronger networks in the city and greater region. This highlights everyone's great commitment to wine as a cultural asset, which has become a growing public interest ever since we joined the Great Wine Capital Network 13 years ago. That is incredibly valuable to us. That's why we still feel tremendously grateful to be a member of the Great Wine Capital's global network. And I'm sure this view is shared by District Administrator Schäfer and District Administrator Sippel. We would like to say a special thank you to Catherine Le Parmentier and her team at the Bordeaux office for their strong and trusting cooperation with us. I would, it's your fault. I would also like to thank all our loyal sponsors, supporters, and contributors who have stood by us throughout this difficult period. We are looking forward to exchanging ideas with you on the current trends in international wine tourism and stepping up our networking over the next few days. Dear international delegates from the Great Wine Capitals, we are so proud to present the qualities of Mainz and Rheinhessen we will start by revealing one of our biggest secrets, our unbelievable strong family businesses, which combine unusual ideas, close cohesion and different strength to create promising concepts that are fit for the future. The three families I would like to welcome today, Jordan, Törle and Vasem, have all won the Best of Wine Tourism Award and are really good examples of successful family businesses in Mainz and Rheinhessen. And I'm curious about the two international best practices, Francois Baudet for the Great Wine Capital Bordeaux and Frédéric Cazzini for the Great Wine Capital Verona. A very warm welcome to you all. I wish everyone an interesting start to the event and an exciting entertainment. Of course, enjoyable annual conference 2021 in Mainz and Rheinhessen. It's really nice to see you. Have a great stay. Thank you very much, Michael Ebling, Mayor of Mainz. And I think this escape room in the wine cellar sounded very interesting. And I hope there's wine involved if you want to solve this escape room. So these has be, have been our two hosts, you could say, of this year's annual conference, the federal state of Rheinland-Pfalz and, of course, the city of Mainz as Germany's great wine capital. But now we also want to hear something from representatives of the global network Great Wine Capitals. And first of all, I would like to welcome the president, Jacques Forance, to stage. Jacques Forance. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Mr. Minister, Minister, Mr. Mayor, dear friends, it's a real pleasure to see each other again. I hope you and your families are doing the best you can. I thank those who were, who were able to travel to the beautiful city of Mayence, which welcomed us for our Great One Capital Annual Conference, and also those who join us from their city remotely. And of course, I would like to thank our us for the organization of this annual conference, which turned out to be particularly complicated since it takes place in hybrid format and with reduced gorges. Thank you, Mr. Mayer. Thank you, dear Manuela. And thank you for the whole team led by Al Caroline for working hard so that conference can take place despite the circumstances. Remember our optimism at the end of 2019 when we adopted our strategic plan for the next 10 years. It makes you a little dizzy to think that so many incredible things have happened in the 24 month period. First and foremost, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the difficulties of traveling and the highlighting of more in addition to global warming. During this period, our network was able to show creativity and dynamism to offer our partners the most suitable tools for resuming activity. 
This is evidenced by the many seminars that have brought together experts and speakers from all over the world that we have organized or in, in which we have participated. Proof also by the many requests that have been sent to us either to collaborate or to join various organizations. Finally, proof by the applications that we have received to join our network. We will be discussing all this over the next few days. I will leave it to our permanent secretary, Catherine Le Parmentier, to inform you. Finally, you should know that during these three years of mandate as president of our network, I had a great pleasure in working with all of you, members of the executive committee, coordinators, and partners. The bonds that bind us have been shown to be all the stronger as the storm devastated the whole world. Not only have we, have we been through them, but we are coming out, I'm sure, even stronger. Finally, I would like to thank the Permanent Secretary, sorry, again, <laughs> and, and his team for the work accomplished during the period, and also, and also Vice President Joe Collins, whose departure we learned a few days ago. We thank her for all of her work, both in favor of Adelaide in Australia and for the network itself. Thank you again and welcome. I leave the floor to Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques Florence. And Catherine Le Parmentier is already here, so. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, just a few words about the Great Wayne Capitals Global Network that was developed um, on a Bordeaux Chamber of Commerce initiative in 1999. The idea was to uh, create business partnerships with some of the best wine regions in the world. Today, we have 11 member cities connected by greatness and excellence on both hemispheres both in the old world of wine and the new world of wine. Our link is the common culture that we have around wine. So I will just name our members, starting with the European members. We have six of them at the moment. Bordeaux, obviously, Mainz and Rheinhessen, Porto, Bilbao Rioja, Verona, and Lausanne. And out of Europe, we have San Francisco in association with Napa Valley, Mendoza, Argentina, Valparaiso, Casablanca Valley, Cape Town and the Cape Winelands, Adelaide, South Australia. Our local steering committees have representatives from the main regional political bodies, wine councils, tourism boards, business schools and universities, all of them working together, hand in hand, to promote our regions as the great wine capital, as wine distillations of excellence. The network facilitates the sharing of knowledge, ideas, and experiences in the wine industry. It stimulates business, innovation, and friendships. It is a means to collaborate on challenges and opportunities in the wine industry and to promote our wine destinations of excellence. We are recognized worldwide for our expertise in wine tourism, but we are also very open to all the challenges of the wine and the tourism industries that they are facing nowadays, like global warming, innovation, or sustainability. Jack mentioned uh, just uh, before that when we celebrated our 20th anniversary in Bordeaux in 2019, we wanted to reinvent ourselves and drafted a 2030 strategy. Within this strategy was included the objective of finding new members. So that was one of our priority, to grow the numbers of our members, still respecting our willingness and get an engagement of excellence and greatness that should be um, our leading uh, purpose. So we've been working in the last uh, month with uh, different destinations around the world, other countries to invite to participate in our organization. 
and I hope that in the coming month we'll be able to announce some new members uh, from elsewhere. So. Another one of our objectives in our new strategy is to increase our partnerships with the international organizations, which we have done so far. We became, last year, observer member of the OIV, uh, International Organization for Vine and Wine. We also, so that's very important in terms of image in the wine world. Uh, we have signed last year as well, a, uh, we are now members, sorry, uh, membership of, um, with the Porto Protocol Foundation. This is a recent uh, association based in Porto because it was initiated by some um, Porto wine businesses uh, whose objective, uh, which objective is to, um, uh, to offer, to look for and offer solutions to the global warming, to the wine industry. So they are not, you know, working on the global warming itself, but they try to, to, to exchange and uh, good, no, good um, practices and uh, understandings to, to, towards um, within the wine industry globally uh, to try to share those um, solutions when they appear. So, and this is very important for us as, of course, as a global organization, we, are, we want to be involved in the sustainability um, business. And last but not least, we signed no less than uh, last month a memorandum of understanding to collaborate with the United Nations World Tourism Organization. And this gave us the opportunity to participate in several online events but also face-to-face -face events and conferences, the most recent being the participation in the fifth World Tourism Organization Wine Tourism Conference that took place in sep last September in Alentejo, Portugal. When the whole world closed down, March 2020 or so, our network has been essential in maintaining the links between our wine regions. Very quickly, we were able to use online tools to discuss the experiences put in place here and there to react to the lockdown and to prepare reopening. From the first week of the crisis, we set up exchanges between our wine producers associations to imagine solutions for our wine growers, new communication strategies, online sales, webinars, were all the new topics that we discussed at that point. Thanks to these, um, thanks to these uh, new tools, we also have set up a number of webinars on wine tourism dedicated to the wine industry, such as Safe Winery Reopening After COVID Crisis or Keys to a Successful Wine Tourism Branding. We also have uh, implemented uh, different webinars promoting our destinations thanks to our travel network. And we will continue our momentum to deal with these topics that concerns us, such as sustainable winterism. The new online working tools have also allowed us to improve our own internal communication. And although we have to face the challenges imposed by time zones, you know, it's not that easy to organize a meeting with all our members when you have one in Adelaide and another one in California. But we did success in organizing this, and we've been uh, able to multiply the consultation meetings and progress more quickly in our different programs. Even though virtual tools are now available, it remains a pleasure to be able to be here in person to benefit of the great program organized by our partners in Mainz and Rheinhessen. Only the European Great Wine Capital members are represented in person in this conference, Plus, we will have the pleasure to welcome a representative from Napa Valley later today. Of course, the other members could not attend. You know that Australia, for example, they still cannot leave the country. The frontiers are still totally closed. So even though they would have loved to be here and they all send their hello, um, it was just not possible for them to come. Same thing for South America. Now they can travel a little bit from Chile or Argentina, but they would have undergone um, a, a quarantine, which makes it a bit harsh, let's say. So unfortunately, or fortunately enough, we have our, our European members represented, plus Napa Valley that will be around. 
Those annual conferences uh, give our delegates the opportunities to visit and discover the hosting region and meet with their stakeholders. They give rise to many exchanges and allow our delegates from elsewhere to go to the field to better understand the challenges of the local wine industry. So after the, besides the two conferences programmed this week, today, and the one, next one on Thursday about trends and innovative ideas for wine tourism, there will be one day dedicated to the technical tours in the vineyards. Then the program will give place to an international wine tasting that was, that was supported, that will be supported by a new initiative created by Mines, the Great Wine Capitals Wine Tasting Package. This is an exclusive case of wines from all of our wine region that people can buy online and enjoy the tasting home with friends or family, watching a video that's provided uh, together with a case of wine. This video has been produced to explain the concept and comment the wine. So it's a nice thing to, to order and to enjoy whenever you have time to, to share this with friends. This week we'll end with the announcement of our Great Wine Capitals 2022 Best of Tourism Global Winners. This has been mentioned already by our minister and by our, the mayor, but this, as you know, is our most important program within the Great Wine Capitals, the Best of Wine Tourism Awards. Out of some 500 wineries that have applied this year to the contest in the different wine regions, 65 were awarded a prize this year, um, regional prizes in, in our capitals. And as soon as this coming Friday, there will be a platform online where anyone can vote among those 65 regional winners to um, vote for their preferred wine tourism experience. They will be able to vote for their favorite winery around the world. So make sure that as soon as Friday morning, you go up on the, you link to the Great Wine Capitals website and you go and vote for your favorite one.